This is how to balance equations, and we're on page 216 in our fusion books. First, let's go over this example that they gave us on page 216. We're going to start with the unbalanced equation and we'll write it down on our paper. And then what I like to do is draw two lines to make sort of a t-chart where we cut the equation in half right down the middle where the arrow is. And that way we have on one side we're going to have our workspace for our reactants and on the other side the workspace for the products. What did they do next in the example? Can you see what they did? That's right. They modeled the different molecules that we had here. And we're going to do the same thing in our workspace, except we're, instead of drawing the circles, we're going to model it with our chemical formulas. So we have a carbon, an oxygen molecule in our original unbalanced equation. So we're going to write it down here in our workspace. What did they do next? They counted. They counted the different atoms in the molecules. So let's do that too. How many carbons? one. How many oxygens? Two. The subscript two tells us we have two oxygen atoms in one oxygen molecule. Here on the product side we have one carbon and one oxygen. Do these balance? No. We knew it was unbalanced when we started and we can see it here. There's three atoms on this side total and only two atoms on this side. The law of conservation of mass says we have to have equal number of atoms going into and coming out of a chemical reaction. How do we fix it? Well, we can add more atoms, but they have to be in the form of these molecules. We can't add something that isn't a carbon or an O2 or a CO. By the way, do you know what CO means? It's carbon monoxide. So to balance, we're going to add another CO, carbon monoxide, and that will bring up our number of oxygens. It also, however, brings up our number of carbons to two, and now we're unbalanced again in a new way. Now we have four atoms on the right-hand side, and only three atoms on the, on the left-hand side in our reactants. So we need more of what? Can you see what we need more of and where? We need more carbon on this side. So we'll go ahead and add another carbon. Change our numbers, our counts. And you can see now, two, two, and two, two. We are completely balanced. The next part is to write down the coefficients in front of the molecules. How do we do that? Well, we're going to look in our workspace and see how many molecules we have. There are two carbon, so we'll put a two here. One oxygen molecule. So we get a 1 here. What coefficient will go here? There are two carbon monoxides, so 2 will go there. Here's our balanced equation. In reality, you don't need that 1 there. When there's no coefficient, 
it's an understood one.